ISA 560 subsequent events. Guys, all this is, is the auditing standard. For what the auditor is responsible to do. In addressing those post reporting date events. So guys, if you think about it, for most of our balances or transactions, we don't have a set auditing standard. So we don't have a revenue standard or a purchases standard. But we do have a standard that says these are the substantive procedures you need to perform. This is when you need to do test of controls. So for those class of transactions or account balances, we've got general procedures that should be performed in order to test the assertions for those balances or transactions. However, now we're doing something that's a little bit more complicated. Post-reporting date events in accounting, so events happening after the date of the year end. Now as auditors, we've got to go and address this as our own standard because it has to impact us. Because at what point do we get to stop having to look for events after reporting dates and their effects on the current financials? Because guys, think about it. Their year end this year, any event that happens from this date onwards now could be post-reporting. So we have to have a cutoff. And so that's why there's an auditing standard specifically addressed to what we must do with regards to these events. Okay, so we're just going to look at what our responsibility is essentially in understanding subsequent events. Then we have a timeline which is going to tell us when we need to stop doing certain things because it's enough. The time has lapsed. We'll look at the risks and then common questions and how we respond to those common questions. Okay, so in terms of understanding subsequent events, guys, it is just what is the auditor's consideration of those post-reporting date events that we've just looked at and the effect that they are going to have on the auditor's report. Okay, because some of those post-reporting are going to be adjusting. If management don't adjust them, then how does that impact on our audit report? They are misstatements. And then there's the consideration that if management do adjust, but they adjust incorrectly, they are still misstatements and how are they going to impact on our audit report. So we have to understand all the post-reporting date events and whether they are adjusting or not. And then if they are adjusting and have been adjusted, we have to audit to make sure they've been accounted for correctly. And if they haven't been, then we need to include that in our opinion. Okay, so auditing has then given us a timeline because of that risk of subsequent events going on for years after the year end and us still looking at them and considering whether they're going to affect that year end that took place many years ago. So the timeline that we work with is we have a period one which is going to be the time after the year end date and before the date of the audit report. So we are busy working and doing the audit chair. We are actually conducting the audit chair because we haven't given an opinion yet. And so here we will come across post-reporting date events and if we come across those in this period, they can still be included in our audit report. Okay, nice and simple. The second period is now a little bit more tricky in that the audit report has been issued. Audit report has been given to the directors. So let's actually make that clear. Given to the directors of the company. They now can see what our opinion is. What happens if events happen after our audit report, but before the dates that the financials, including our audit reports, are issued to the users? So our third period is now when those financials are issued to the users and they obviously include our audit reports. So it is now 
been made available to whoever needs access to those financials. So what we have to do is consider what is our responsibility in each of these periods when it comes to those post-reporting date events. And then how are they going to impact our audit opinion, especially if we are looking at them happening in period two and period three because our audit report has already been provided. We've done our work. Now what happens with those events? Okay. So the first question I just need to ask you is, considering this timeline, when do you think we as the auditors have a responsibility to identify post-reporting date events? When do you think we have to go and find them ourselves, not only rely on what management have done? In period one only. We shouldn't be looking for events after the date of the audit report because we've given our report. We believe our opinion is correct based on the work that was done up until this date. So guys, it's only in period one that we have to go and find them. The reason why we have to find them is because we need to go and make sure that they have completely accounted for their post-reporting date events. And so how can we make sure they have recorded and accounted for all? We have to go and find all to do a comparison with what they've done. Okay, after our report, we don't have to go and find any because we've given our report, so we don't have a responsibility to go and look for more to make sure it's been completely accounted for. However, I will tell you that we do still have a responsibility in period two and three, but it's not to identify post-reporting date events. If post-reporting date events are identified by management in any of these periods and they come to the auditor's attention, The auditor is going to have to consider if they are adjusting and then the impact on the audit report. Even if the audit report has been issued and given to the users with the financials. So we only have a responsibility to identify them in period one. However, if we become aware of any post-reporting date events in period two and three, we have a responsibility to consider if they are adjusting, and then if they are adjusted, are they done correctly to audit that adjustment, and if they are adjusting and they are not adjusted, how does that affect our opinion? Bearing in mind our report has been given, which means we are going to have to give a new report. Okay, but we'll look at the details of that when we get to the common questions. So, let's look at the risks. 